this is question six from the Leaving Cert Ordinary Level Paper 1 from 2020. Up the top right, you'll find a playlist that will bring you to my solutions for all the questions in this paper. And below the video, you'll find a link to an image of this question, so you can try it in your own time. Question six is split into two questions, A and B. Part A is going to revolve around this function here. It has three, three of its own subparts. Part one simply asks you to differentiate this. Now, we often write differentiate dy dx, and the other way we write it is um, f prime x. Maybe I shouldn't put them equal to each other, but you know what? It's fine. Uh, in this case, we're going to use f prime x because, let me move it over, um, because they gave us fx. Let's write f prime x. So how do we differentiate? Uh, we have a rule for this. I, I'm, I'm going to hope most of you are able to do it by now. Uh, I'll just show you to make sure. We take this number and multiply it by uh, this number. So we get 12x and we take one away from this number. And we continue that on down. Uh, we get minus 6x1. We don't need to write the 1. It's a little more confusing for this one. There's a 1 up here and there's a 1 in front of every number. So that's 1 times 1. And uh, let's write in that one. And then x, take one away. x to the power of zero is one. So that's there as well. And this is true for all of them. Even this last one that has no x, it does. It has an x to the power of zero. So it's zero multiplied by seven. That's zero. It's all gone. So we get, we get this. Most students just remember uh, these last two as a special case. That's fine. So this is it. This is full marks for a part one, uh, differentiator. For part two, they ask you to find the slope of a tangent to this curve, um, the same curve here, at a certain point. Now, I don't know what this curve looks like. You could look it up in a graphing calculator. I'm not going to bother. Um, it might look something like this, say. And they tell us there's a point. Say it's here, 1 minus 5. And there's a slope at that point. Again, I don't know if it actually looks like this at all. How do we find the slope? of, a, of a, um, a point on a curve, we differentiate, which we've already done, and then we put in the number for x that we want to know about. And they give us the number for x. It's uh, 1 minus 5 is the point. So the number for x is 1. Right here, the number is 1. So to find the slope, we just put 1 into this derivative function. We just put everywhere there's an x, we put a 1. So we get 12 times 1 squared, Let's put a bracket around that. Minus 6 times 1 plus 1. So this is 12, take away 6, add 1 onto it. That's 7. So the slope at, um, at this point is... Oh, my drawing wasn't too bad then because it's nice. Uh, <laughs> uh, 7 goes up very fast. From left to right and goes up. Okay, so the last uh, part asks us to find the equation of a tangent. So this, this line I drew here, this is the tangent. They want the equation of that. Now, we know how to get the equation of a line. Uh, if you don't remember, it's in your formula book, so you don't have to remember this in, in your exam, but it's y minus y1 is equal m multiplied by x minus x1. That's the equation for the line. All you need to do this is any point on the line, that's x1 and y1. Well, look, we have a point on the line, that's good, x1, y1. And we need the slope, m. That's good, because we just found the slope. And the slope is the derivative at that point. So we just fill this in. Um, that's y minus minus 5. Try, make sure you don't lose that second minus. Equals 7 multiplied by x minus 1. And I, I could argue that's enough. That's correct. That's an equation of a line. But we would like to clean it up a little bit. Uh, y is equal to, oh, sorry, y plus uh, minus and a minus does not make it equal. It makes a plus. Um, plus 5 is equal to 7x, 7 times minus 1 is minus 7. Again, I'd argue this is okay, but we can clean it up more. Uh, let's get the 5 over this side. y is equal to 7x minus 7 minus another 5 is minus 12. That's the equation of this line. Some students like to write it, rearrange this again, maybe 7x minus y. Um, I guess minus 12 equals 0. Or other students like to write 7x minus y is equal to 12. I, I'd much rather this way, y on its own. But they didn't ask us. They often do. They often say they want it to look like this. 
or they often say they want it to look like this, or they want it to look like this. Just do whatever they tell you. If they, if they don't tell you, do whichever way you want. Okay, let me rub this out and we'll move on to part B. Okay, in part B, they give us a different function, gx this time, and we're missing some numbers from it. So whenever you're missing something, you need information to find it. So they gave us this a piece of information. In fact, they gave us two pieces of information. That's good because there was two things missing. So we would need two pieces of information. Um, they also, one of the pieces of information is the derivative. Uh, um, so that what this is saying is the derivative of g, when I put 3 into it, is equal to 9. Let me show you what I mean with this line here. This is telling me g, when I put 2 into it, is equal to 6. Well, here's g. When I put 2 into it, I get, um, let me write it like this. When I put 2 into it, I get 2 times 2 squared plus uh, p times 2 plus q. Or to uh, clean this up, this will come out as 8 plus 2p plus q. And that must equal, that's, here's what it's telling us, it must equal 6. That's that information. So now we have a nice simple equation, but unfortunately there's too much in it. P and Q, there's only one equation. So let's do the same with this one. But first we have to, and um, this is the thing students probably would have missed in this. First thing, we need to get the derivative. We need to work out the derivative ourselves. So here's GX, let's find the derivative. Just like in part 1, we're going to do the same rules. 2 multiplied by 2 is 4, and then take 1 away from the x. Just like in part 1, we have a 1 up here. 1 multiplied by p. Remember, p is a number. We just don't know it yet. Maybe it's 5. Maybe it's 19. We don't know it yet. 3, and just like you would a number. 1 multiplied by p is p. Yeah, plus p it is. Yes. Um, take 1 away from this. We get 0. x to the power of 0 is 1. So we don't write it. Well, you can write it in if you want. 1. Everything's multiplied by 1 though. And then the last one, there is no x. So q doesn't, doesn't change when x changes. That's what the derivative is. We're asking ourselves, what happens when x moves? Well, when x moves, nothing happens. So it's 0. So nothing's there. And this one's much easier because the second piece of information tells us when we put 3 into this, when uh, g prime of, my bad, of 3... Uh, when 3 goes into this, 9 comes out. So let's put 3 in. 4 times 3 plus p, that must equal 9. Well, this we can just solve straight away. This is just 12 plus p must equal 9. I think we can guess what p is. p must be minus 3. What else could add on to 12 to get 9? Well, it must be a minus number. But let's uh, do it more properly. p is equal to 9 minus 12. We'll take this from both sides. p is equal to minus 3. Well, now we can do this one here, because let's write this one again. It's 8 plus 2, but I know p now. p is minus 3 plus q is equal 6. Let's clean this up. 2 multiplied by minus 3 is minus 6. 8 minus 6, well, that's just 2. 2 plus q is equal to 6. Again, we can figure out q must be 4. But let's do it more properly. Uh, Q is equal to 6 minus 2. Take that over. Uh, that means Q is equal to 4. And that's, I believe that's all they asked us. Find the value of P and Q. P is minus 3. Q is 4. If you have any follow-up questions on this or is there anything I did wrong, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.